Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone on Think Tech on Spectrum OC16. I'm your host, Arby Kelly, and today we're going to be talking about excuses. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a little tired of the excuses I've been hearing from Washington, from politics, even from local community leadership, and sometimes from my husband, though I'm sure he feels the same way about me. So today, we're talking with the confidence architect, Kamisha Muhammad, about making excuses and why they don't serve you. Kamisha, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. Oh, it's so good to have you here. I'm excited you're joining us. Now, viewers, you should know, I've actually never met Kamisha face to face. So this entire interview is live, totally spontaneous. She hasn't been prepped, but we're gonna have a lot of fun anyway. So Kamisha, yes, yes we are. <laughs> Kamisha, would you be willing to explain a little bit more to our viewers about what you do? Yes, I am a lifestyle transformation coach and speaker and currently an author as well. Um, I help women gain the courage, confidence, and compassion for who they really are so that they can show up boldly, fearlessly, and authentically to live the life that they truly want to live. And um, I do that through coaching and speaking and sharing. <laughs> That sounds like a really unique and a really interesting thing to do. You must get a lot of interesting stories. You must get a lot of interesting clients. But how did you get into that? OK, so I got into it because I had a really expensive degree that I wasn't using. And I found that I needed to use it because I spent a lot of money on it. And I wanted to use it in a way that I could, you know, stand in my integrity and also set my own standards. And I felt like working out in the field that I was in, I was running into a lot of integrity issues. I, was, I wasn't in a place where it was to a high enough standard that I felt comfortable to actually represent them. And so I just got tired of it happening over and over, and I wanted to control my own situation. And um, I fell into a slump trying to figure out, okay, what do I do? Like, I really want to live life, but it's so hard to just show up and work your own business, and I really want to go back and work for someone else because it's easy. But then I have to, again, work to their standards and have to deal with whether it's going to be in integrity or not. And I didn't want to because integrity is really high on my values list. So um, what happened was I said, okay, how can I help other people? And I found that I wanted to help other people be confident in who they are, like who they really are, so they can go out and really live how they wanted to live because that's what I did for myself and that's how I wanted to show up, and I was like, there's many women out here that want to do the same thing, so why not go ahead and help them do that? Wow, Kamisha, that is really powerful. Um, would you be willing to tell me a little bit more about some of the struggles you see these women going through, some of the, the difficulties that they face? I um, started out working um, with women on solely confidence, and what I came to find is that a lot of the women weren't ready for the confidence conversation because at the moment, a lot of them didn't even feel like they were worth going after their dreams, they were worth being who they were because they were always told something different and they, were, they always felt something different from the people around them. So we were stuck in the story of work. All right, that is, that's a really interesting story. And I actually have a couple personal experiences about that where I've noticed in my personal life whenever I'm really wanting to go after something and there's something that I know is gonna be good for me, I just kind of, sometimes we just freeze and, and we, we hit this thing where we don't know how to move forward, where we, we kind of want to move forward, but we're afraid of the risks. And so we end up making these, these ideas and these stories about why we can't have what we want, why it's not safe to go after what we want. And so I've seen in my life so many times where there's something that I say I want, 
but instead of getting my results, I, I make excuses. Oh, I can't do this this week. I've just been too busy. Oh, my husband and I are going through a rough spot. I have to focus on that. Or, oh, you know, I've been going back to college. I just don't have time. And so I make all of these excuses instead of getting the thing that I actually want. Is that, is that something you see your clients doing sometimes? Oh, yes. It happens very, very often. And it even happened with me. So I learned to see the patterns because it was a pattern that I followed. And I followed it in kind of a different direction where I um, had the excuse of why I shouldn't show up and show out for me. And my excuse was because it would dim someone else's light and it would hurt someone else. And I really believed it. It was like it was instilled in me. Like if I keep showing up and showing out and I'm getting all this recognition, it's taking away from someone else. And that was another reason why I decided to help women just show up and be who they are because I went through a whole phase of where I was always dimming who I was because I wanted to let other people shine, which it didn't serve me any purpose. It made me feel a little okay, but it also helped me hide. So I felt okay, but I also was able to hide for that very reason. And um, that was a really good excuse um, for me, you know, to hide. Whereas um, later I decided, like, hey, I'm tired of dimming my light. It takes too much energy. I'm not happy. I really want to be happy, so I'm just going to be who I am. And if someone doesn't like it, they don't mesh with me, or it's not good for someone else, it's okay because I'll find my people. I'll find the people who like me and love me for exactly who I am, and those were the people that were rocking my life. And the people that don't, uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> and I want other women to feel that exact way. And you know, Kamisha, it's really funny you say that because actually that's something I've been going through right now. Now, my viewers, you know, I have my TV show, I'm a speaker, I'm a coach, I sing. I love to put myself out there, but I often don't because I feel like there's a limited amount of, of whether that's like happiness or recognition. And if I put myself out there, like you said, I'm taking it from someone else. And so I've had to struggle with that mindset myself that if, that if I am my true self and I go after what I really want, I'll outshine people and everyone will turn on me and drag me down. Like that's a fear I've had. So when you, when you are working with your clients on this, what do you tell them or what do you have them do to have them work through this situation? I have them look at the outcome and weigh the results. What, what is going to be different if you show up as who you really are versus if you don't? How is that going to serve you in your life? You, start, you have to take care of yourself first. You can't take care of everybody else and then not take care of yourself. You are the most important. You have to take care of you so you can show up as your best self so that you can be of help to those around you or take care of your children or live in harmony, you know, as much as you can with your husband because you know how they get. <laughs> so you have to love who you are first and you have to take care of you. So I focus, I focus on that a lot. I focus on you, like you are important. It's okay to be selfish. It's okay because when you are selfish, you're able to be happy and helpful. You don't have to not help people because you're being a little selfish. Being a little selfish helps you be your best you. And I, I think some viewers might misinterpret this as you saying that, oh, you should undermine other people, or oh, you can, be, you can take things from other people. But I don't think that's what you're saying. Right? I think it's more like oh, you're saying. Not. No, no, no. I'm saying, when I'm saying be selfish, I'm saying think of yourself first sometimes. Because we as women, we're so nurturing and we want to help everybody else that we neglect ourselves and we forget ourselves. And so everybody else is getting what they need and then we're falling by the wayside and we're not getting what we need. So what I'm saying is okay to be selfish sometimes and think of yourself first, take care of you, because self-care is very important. You have to take care of yourself so that you can really show up. And a lot of people take it as, oh, she's telling people to say no, 
and I won't help you, or I can't do that for you, I have to do for me. And I'm kind of saying that, but I'm not really saying that. What I'm saying is think of yourself first so that you can make sure that you're happy mentally, physically, and emotionally so that you can be your best you. And then as you're doing that, you can reach out and help other people. You can be a part of other things, but you need to help you first. You know, I think, okay, I think I get it now. And so I have a story where recently I committed to, to helping a friend with a project right about the same time that I decided to go back to college while I was also growing my business. And then as all of this was going on, I was like, I'm running out of hours. And then my church called me. They wanted me to take on some extra responsibilities there. And I was so, like, tense and stressed by like trying to juggle everything that I ended up like disappearing for a week and a half where I just I couldn't answer my messages I couldn't show up to anything I was like so overwhelmed that I shut down and if I had at the very beginning been just a little selfish like you said I might not have committed quite so much to that project I might have been able to commit to a smaller thing for my church I might have been able to spend more time on my college courses, maybe shrink down a little bit on my business, but I would have kept my sanity. And it's not like I would have let those friends down, but I still could have supported them in a way that also supported me. Is that what you're saying? Yes, you could have um, thought of ways to, um, I want to I want to say spread your time more wisely than spreading yourself thin because I know you you just said you wanted to help and you had made a commitment but sometimes you do have to say okay what can I really handle and how can I handle it effectively and efficiently because sh like if you can't handle it and then you shut down now you are harming yourself versus if you at the beginning you would have said, okay, this is how much time I have that I can commit to this. And if you can accept this time here, this, you know, this amount of hours or this amount of minutes, then I can help you. But if this is not enough time for what you need, I'm sorry I won't be able to help because I have to, you know, I have my own commitments that I'm committed to right now. You know, and sometimes people are like, I don't want to say no, but you don't necessarily have to say no. You, you can say at this time, I don't have um, the capacity to handle that for you. But if you need me later, I can say, I'll let you know if I have the time then. You know, you don't have to come straight out with the word no. Everybody thinks that no is a bad word, but no is a good word. <laughs> I want to say no is a good word because I used to do the same exact thing. I would take on so much and so much and so much because I really wanted to help. But then for me, I I didn't I had a shutdown situation that was for um not, you know, just a couple of weeks. It was for like some months and I just, you know, was like, okay, no more world. I really just have to shut down and take care of me. But it followed me being stressed to the point to where I got sick. And ended up in the hospital because of the stress and um, made my it made my body sick. That's why I said self care is so important to take care of you physically, mentally, and emotionally. Like you have to set boundaries and be able to say, I can't do that right now. I can't help you with that right now because if you don't, you risk yourself. You know, you risk yourself, and that's not what we want to do. We don't want to risk ourselves, which as women, we do it so much. And sometimes we just have to learn to say, I can't, or no, or I told them an easier way to say no is to just schedule your you time that no one or anything can interrupt. Pick a day of the week or a couple of hours that that's just you, and it's time for no one else. That's an easy no. On this day and time, I'm not available because that's my me time. And that's not even saying no. That's just saying, hey, this is the time for me and nobody else. So that's a good way to get started in um, blocking out time for you so that you can really take care of you and decompress and not worry about anything else going on. That's just like the shutout time for you. And it's like a healthier way to do it before you get to the end and it's kind of too late. Those are some brilliant strategies, Kamisha, so thank you for sharing. 
And viewers, we are going to be right back to talk just in a minute, just in a minute more. We'll be right back to talk more about making excuses and some easy strategies that you can use to start saying no and protecting yourself. See you in a minute. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii, uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Welcome back to Out of the Comfort Zone. I'm your host, R.B. Kelly, and this is our special guest, Kamisha Muhammad. Now, viewers, when you checked out, we were talking about easy strategies for you to say no. We were talking about why it's so important to be a little bit selfish and put yourself first. Now, we also want to dive into a little bit of excuses. So, Kamisha, can you explain what you're thinking with this? Yes, yes, yes. So, um, I found that it's so easy to make an excuse and to dismiss something you really want to do because the excuse is easier and I've been through it and I made some crazy excuses to not do what I really wanted to do, be out of fear and um, not wanting to put myself out there. And then I got to a point where I was like, oh, I'm either going to get excuses, I'm, I'm either going to give excuses or I'm going to get results. And so I got to a point where excuses really didn't matter anymore because I was like, it is what it is and it's going to be what it's going to be. And if I don't take a step and jump out there, I'm gonna live in within my fears because fear can consume you. And so I said, okay, I have to get past these excuses, so what am I gonna do? And I just started to jump into anything that I would have apprehensions about or that I would not want to do because it wasn't comfortable. And I love the title out of, my, out of the comfort zone because what happens is we will live in our comfort zone forever because it's safe and it's easy. <laughs> so um, what I found is that I step outside of my comfort zone consistently on a consistent basis. Um, I always tell everyone to go for what's easy first, but for me, I went for what was hard first because I needed to get past all of the excuses and all of the holdups because I got really, really in tune with time. And I was like, time is passing by and passing by and passing by and you do not get it back. And so I was like, okay, I can't waste any more time. So let me expose myself to these things that I'm fearful of or that are uncomfortable so that I can get used to being uncomfortable. And what happened was I kept doing it and I kept doing it and I kept doing it. And now I'm not as uncomfortable to do those things. And sometimes I don't even think about it because I built it into myself that it's become part of my lifestyle to just go after whatever I'm most afraid of first <laughs> and get it over with. And it's kind of like you're numbing yourself to the fear and you're numbing yourself to being uncomfortable because you're consistently doing it. And it was, um, I was doing it for a while and I came across a YouTube video where, I wish I could remember his name right now, where he was actually exposing his, himself to no's. He would ask people outrageous things, get a no, ask someone something outrageous, get a no, because he wanted to 
get used to hearing no so that when he heard it, it didn't affect me anymore. And that's kind of what I did with fear. And being uncomfortable, I kept exposing myself to it so that later I wouldn't have to, um, you know, deal with excuses and I would get more results. It was about taking action. And taking action is what helps you get past the fear. It helps you get to your results. And it also helps you with the excuses. Mm -hmm. Excuses are... I say fear's best friend or fear's closest cousin. You know, they work together. You know, they plot on you. <laughs> but you have to find, you know, I, I made a post the other day, like, be your own superhero and conquer, you know, fear and excuses and, you know, live in your confidence and live fearlessly and boldly so that you can get to the life you want to live and get to the life you want to live quicker instead of letting fear and excuses run your life, you know, you take control and start running your own life. Wow, Kamisha. Now, I know, okay, I can think of just today several excuses that I've already made. So what would you recommend for people who are, you know, trying to stop using these excuses, start taking accountability, and start building that confidence? What would you have for them? Um, I usually have a, check, a checklist. And I like to do lists because if you're writing it out for one and then you see it right in front of you. And I usually say, you know, write, you know, one column, all the excuses that you would make to not do something that you really love and that you really want to do. Make a list of all of those excuses. And then make another column and write why you make that excuse. How does that excuse really affect you? And in the third column, write, is the excuse really in control? Is that excuse larger than what you want to do with um, your life and where you want to be in life? I um, also say with excuses, I always say find, um, find the, the counter for your excuse. And what I mean by the counter, what is your excuse? And now turn your excuse around and do the opposite. Because we sometimes, we make silly excuses. <laughs> we make silly excuses and we we live in them and so we make them so much that we start to believe them. You know, that is a real thing. We start to believe that they're actually true because we're consistently saying it, we're consistently living in it, so we start really identifying with it. Whereas if we start to conquer those excuses by countering them and doing the opposite, you know, to really conquer that excuse. Now, you can always come up with another silly excuse, or I call them smexy because <laughs> we really, we get creative with these excuses. Uh, we get really creative, and I know because I'm a really creative person. <laughs> and um, the, the biggest one that I think we tell ourselves is, I'll do it tomorrow. I do that all like, the time. I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. You know, and I say those tomorrows turn into weeks and months and years, and then you get to your um, New Year's resolution, and you have the same New Year's resolution from the previous year and the previous year and the previous year because you keep putting it off and you never do it. And what I tell people is there's no such thing as tomorrow. Like, tomorrow does not exist. Tomorrow is a fantasy because every time you say, I'll do it tomorrow, you wake up, and guess what? It's today. So there is no tomorrow. And if you keep waiting and say, I'll do it tomorrow, and your, your todays keep passing, so why not just do it right now and do it today? Thank you, Kamisha. This has been really interesting for me and I hope very helpful for our viewers. Now, is there a website or a link where people can find you and maybe practice this? Yes. Um, so, of course, my website is um, www. Kamisha.com, and my name is C-A-M-E-A-S-H-A, -E -A and I want to point that out just so you can find me at www.kamisha.com, and on all social media at Kamisha R-M, or you can type in the confidence architect and I should pop up. <laughs> all right. Now, when we were talking earlier over the break, you did mention that there was, like, a guide that people could use. It was the... The excuse cleanse, or what was that? Oh, again? yes. So, 
what I have for you guys is a, um, I have an Excuse Cleanse starter kit that is a starter kit for before entering into the Excuse Cleanse. And what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to give you a free surprise out of the starter kit. And to get it, you just have to go to theexcusecleanse.com and enter in your information and get on the wait list because it drops on Monday and I'll be giving you all something free Ooh. out of the starter kit. All right, thank you, Kamisha. So viewers, if you haven't already, be sure to go visit theexcusecleanse.com. Not cleans, C-L-E-A-N, C-L-E-A-N-S-E, -E, cleanse, the excuse yeah. cleanse. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, Kamisha. We've had a wonderful time having you on the show. Is there any last minute, one or two, we've got just one or two minutes left, but is there anything else you'd like to say to the audience before we go? Yes, I would just like to say, you know, give yourself a chance. Take the time to go for you. Make out what you want to do in your life. Like, what is it? Not what you think is within reach, but what you really want to do, no matter how outrageous it may feel to you, no matter how far away you may think it is, just live in that moment and think about it and write it down. And then think about all of the things that you have that are holding you back. And I want you to decide, do you want to have a life filled with excuses? Or do you want to get results? And the way to get results is to take action and to kick fear in the face and throw, <laughs> I want to say throw excuses to the curb. You know, they're cute and all, but we want to we wanna go ahead and live the life that we want to live. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kamisha. I've really learned a lot from having you here, and I'm sure our audience has as so viewers. Well, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it and really enjoyed speaking with you. Good. I'm happy to hear that. So viewers, I hope you are not getting lazy. I hope you're not getting stuck in your comfort zone because there's still more to learn. Every week, you have the opportunity to tune in on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. to get more of Kamisha and other experts like her to help you stop sucking at life and start getting the results you want. So please do tune in next Tuesday at 1 p.m. for Out of the Comfort Zone. See you there.